Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I'm Nand and this video is all about how to get an A in maths at AS level. I wrote my AS level exams in May June 2017. I got an A in maths and today I'm going to share with you some tricks and strategies and plans which I actually executed before my exams for this wonderful performance. So basically I want to tell you that my serious preparations for maths at AS level were only one and a half months. Like I was I wasn't at all serious about maths just one and a half months before my exams but when I wrote my mock exams at my school and I got like what 54% or something I wasn't at all satisfied with it and I really wanted to get an A but <laughs> The way I was following my plans were pretty significantly wrong so I had to change everything and I had to take some advices from my teacher and it actually worked out pretty well. So today I'm here good to, to share with you all those plans and strategies. So strategy one, success is in the details. Like for AS level in P1, P1 the pure maths one, there are so 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 many details small small details which you need to know for an A and just to mention there are of, there are also small small concepts which they like to ask in five to six mark questions in P1 just for example how many of you know how to find the angle between two lines when you are provided the gradient of both the lines think think it's in P1 it's in P1 I was even shocked the first time I saw that question though. Okay, it's like it's the tan inverse of the first gradient minus the tan inverse of the second gradient gives you the angle between the two lines. Like this this doesn't look very hard concept, but it's such a small part of a chapter with that you even forget to revise through it. And I've seen actually a five mark question on the same topic. Talking intensively about P1, the four most heavy concepts in P1 are vectors, integration, differentiation and functions. All four of these topics carry at least at least six to seven marks in any paper which you any past paper which you pick up. So what my approach firstly was to do topical papers. Topical papers are available on a lot of websites. I'll put up some Put down some links to those websites if I find any but my, my approach towards the topical papers was actually what has helped me a lot because when you do just past papers including all the topics what happens is you get to you get to practice a few kind of questions which they ask from a particular topic but when you do topical papers, you actually get a glance of all the type of questions which they can ask from that particular topic. Yeah, so I, I started with topical papers. I did go on to past papers, but that's only when I finished all the topical papers. And I even after past papers, uh, even after topical papers, I had done like about, about 45 to 50 past papers, like purely past papers. All this requires time, requires energy and requires a lot of dedication because even when you, you should, when, even when you check your own papers and you don't get really good grades while you're just practicing, that's enough to demotivate you. But that shouldn't be the case. You should actually, you know, like just keep on rubbing your pens all day long. I used to, I remember I used to study for a minimum of nine hours and an average of like 11 or 12 hours a day when after my mock exams when I realized that I wasn't even capable of getting a B in mathematics so basically I wrote my mock exams in February and after that I really pushed myself till April when I had my exams and now I'm happy with my grade because if I had continued the same old practice of just revising the notes and going through the textbook, I don't think I would have got an A. And I, I, I strongly suggest to every one of you watching the video that just stop revising the notes and revising from the textbook about two months before your exam. Like you've got literally no time for that. You can, you can, okay, you can refer back to the textbook if you find some difficult concepts in the past paper, but 
I would say about two months before your exams, just nail the past paper. Just hammer all the past papers you have. And it's pretty easy to get past papers nowadays, like on GC Guide and a few other websites. I'll put down the links in the description below. It's, it's pretty easy to get past papers and do every single past paper and every single kind of question they can ask from all the topics. The Cambridge guys might be smart, but you gotta be even smarter. When you do a lot of past papers, you, you will yourself realize that these guys follow a particular pattern of asking questions from every specific topic. Like from any topic, they have only two or three kind of questions which they ask. Like for vectors, they either ask you to find the angle between the vector or find a unit vector or something else. Like just two to three parts. For trigonometry, it's like just proving a formula or something and finding the angle. Then for differentiation, integration, same thing, finding the angles and you know the maximum, minimum stationary points. It's just two to three type of questions which they ask from every topic. But there are some hidden details in all of them. So you have to make sure that you brush up through all those details. Now talking about M1 or S1. I particularly wrote my M1, Mechanics 1, with my P1 at the AS level. M1 wasn't a big issue for me because I actually loved Mechanics and I also took Physics, so it was a add-on benefit. But I don't think it would be a problem even if you don't take Physics because a lot of M1 topics are not even in Physics, so don't just, <laughs> don't just give an excuse that you don't take physics so you can't do good in M1. Anyways, M1 was pretty easy. I followed the same pattern of doing the tropical papers and then doing the past papers. M1 is pretty small paper, so I used to do 9 or 10 past papers in just one day. It sounds a lot, but believe me, I was a E or D grade student and all these pushing habits of mine to academics, this academic maturity has what has helped me to get an A. So it's possible for every one of you, it's not just who, has, who have got A's at O levels who can get an A in, at, at A levels. And for your kind information, I never even did my O levels. I entered into A levels straight, like I never even did my GCE, O levels, nothing. Just straight away A after my grade 10. If you're writing S1 with your P1 at AS level, it's also fine. I've been doing S1, so I can even give you some tips about that. The thing I realized about S1 is that it actually um, tries to judge your ability to think. <laughs> because permutation and combination needs nothing else than your ability to think. Like, all those theory part is small. Like, okay, let me, let me show you this, let me show you this. This is all. Like, my all S1 formulas, all the theories is just one paper, just one side. But what it actually tests you is your ability to use these formulas. I know, which is a bit tricky. Because the kind of questions they ask in these days, like in, in the last um, two to three years after 2015, are actually, they're like, they're transformed. They're pretty hard. They're very demanding. And don't ever underestimate M1 or S1 because they carry about 40% of your AS level results. So just hammer them. They're easy. It's not too hard. And just the last tip I would like to give you guys is don't judge yourself if you are good at doing the past papers before 2014. Because after 2014, what I've realized is in the past papers, the Cambridge guys are trying to transform the way they frame the questions and the order of difficulty in their questions. I believe it's because of the competition going on nowadays, but you need to practice a lot of papers from 2015 and 2016 and now even 2017 are on GCE guide, so you can even practice from them. So these are the past papers which you need to excel in because those are the kind of questions which you expect in your paper if you're writing this year or next year, whenever. These are the kind of questions which you expect and not the ones from 2010 or 2012 because those are a bit easy. But they can give you a good practice, a good framework um, for preparing to do the higher order difficulty questions, you know? Okay guys, that's all for mathematics. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. 
and I'm also preparing for my university. I'm applying to universities in Canada, UK, USA and Australia and I've been going through the admissions process and these days writing my essays and everything. So I'm going to make frequent videos about the university application process and also advices about A-levels of different subjects which I take. If you think I missed anything about mathematics, do put down a comment below. Do subscribe to my channel and all the best for your mathematics preparations.